Hi, this is PD at Bergs Arcade at BergsArcade.com, and here we are with another tutorial in our Hack and Slash series. Uh, so let's go ahead and just dive right in. Uh, there's a couple little things I wanted to take care of again. Uh, I had a chance to sit down and look over some of our mob AI, and there's a few things that I wanted to change that we added a while back, and some stuff that we're currently working on. So if we notice here, I'm going to go ahead and clear the console. I'm going to run up. And when we get to the mob, it's going to go ahead, start attacking us, decide you know, what attack it can use. And as we notice, um, when it's not close enough, not within melee range, it doesn't uh, pick the melee option. And we'll go ahead and clear this. And we'll notice that it, you know, as it's running back to its home base, it's actually still going through this process, deciding what kind of attack. And then, of course, when it reaches its um, spawn point, it you know realizes that, hey, we don't have a target, and it just stops. Uh, I don't want it actually checking uh, through the finite state machine here if it doesn't need to. So let's go ahead and actually open up our code. Uh, we'll just double click here. And we're going to come up to our finite state machine. So let me shrink some of this down. Close the search. Okay, we're in decide here. And let me just check search here. Search, it doesn't move. The only time move should be called and i'll have to make a, a quick double check later is in the decide loop i don't think we actually have anything else we are actually going to be getting rid of three of these as well because i don't think we actually need them in the the main finite state machine for the ai uh, but we'll get to that so i want to make sure the only time i'm calling move is right here all right so we're going to come down to this line here i'm going to put another line here uh, just for a little bit more spacing and as you can see here, we just have a simple if statement. You know, if our target does not equal null, uh, decide what type of action we want to take um, against our target. And that's not exactly what we want. Uh, we also want to check. So I'm going to use an and statement. Uh, what I want to say is target dot compare tag. So I'm actually going to look at the ta the tag. Whoops, on our target. And I want that target or the tag to be player. So I'll go ahead and save this off. And that should actually be it for that one. Uh, make sure I'm checking for null, yep. So I'm gonna go ahead and clear this off. I'm gonna start it up. And I think I'm actually still on full screen. No, I'm not, okay. I wanna go over to the scene view. I'm just gonna go ahead and select my player. I guess I could have selected him over here as well. Uh, but the main thing I actually wanted to look at was this tag. And let's just get growl out of the way there. Uh, make sure it's set to player. It should be. We've set it several times throughout uh, the tutorial series. Uh, this is how I'm actually keeping track of my player right now. Uh, basically, what game object in game is my player is I just use the the tag. But uh, yep, it says player. So let's go ahead. We'll run in. I'm gonna get it to chase me again. I'll run through the portal, and uh, it actually should stop. So let me see, here we go, it chases me. Once I get through the portal, I'll hit clear. Now I'll try to come back through the portal again. And as you can see, it is still moving. So I'm gonna clear it. As you see, we're not getting the debug log messages, so it's not calling those functions anymore. And we can see that he's actually running back and he gets back to his spot and he realizes he doesn't have a target. Great, that's fixed. Well, you have to excuse a bit of the noise in the background. Uh, the chinchillas are actually a little bit happy to see me today. Uh, I've been waiting a while to actually do this tutorial, but uh, I thought they had calmed down. If it gets too loud, I'll actually just go ahead and uh, continue the tutorial a little bit later on. Uh, but let's actually go into our code now and get rid of these extra states that we're not going to be using anymore. And right here. I've gone ahead and actually sat down and looked at the code, and we don't really need these states anymore. Uh, but because we are getting rid of them, make sure that the very last one in your enumeration uh, does not have that comma. Now that means I can actually come down here and get rid of all these other states, so or the uh, case blocks for them. So we're getting rid of attack, retreat, and flee. Now I do still want to be able to have my mob do this. So I'm actually going to come down here, and I'm just going to make a note. Uh, inside of my uh, switch case block and all I'm going to say is uh, add cases for and I'll just do a colon 
And I'm going to, what were they again? Retreat. And retreat will actually just be, uh, it basically, it runs back. I, I've got notes on it from earlier tutorial. Let's just put them in here. Uh, run to nearest mob. Uh, we have flee, which is just run away from the player. And uh, boom, boom, boom. what was that last one again? Uh, did I cut and paste it or did I cut it or did I just delete it? Yeah. Um, let's see, re retreat, flee. I'm actually going to have to undo. There was three of them. Retreat. Flee. Let's back it up a bit. And it was after this. So we can come down here. Retreat. Flee. And attack. And attack we're actually handling inside of uh, the other block. So that's fine. Should have made my comments first. Uh, but these are more advanced topics that we may or may not cover. But I know it's something I will want to add eventually. Okay, so we got that done. We can actually come down here and get rid of these actual functions for them as well. Uh, let me see. I just want to show I got one for melee attack. Yep. So here we go. We just chop all this out. Now, as far as movement goes, uh, there's one thing you're going to want to have to decide now. And you want your, your, I guess, your characters and your mobs to be able to actually move while they uh, perform actions. And right now, I'm just going to take a yes or no stance on that. Um, either they can move around while they're attacking and uh, or, or they can't move around while they're attacking. Right now, I'm just going to say that they can move around all the time while they're attacking. Because uh, I know later on I do want to add some code in to basically just slow them down uh, while they're attacking. And yeah, I forgot to get rid of these. Uh, so basically, if he's using a uh, ranged attack, any sort of ranged attack, either you know like a bow or, or magic attack itself, I'll probably have him move at like half the speed. Uh, just so you can't really kite so well. Uh, but I've, I've, always, I've personally always liked being able to move while I do stuff. I hate those root type uh, games where you actually end up having to, you know, basically root yourself to get a skill off. But uh, it's all personal preference. So we've got that done now. Let's just save that off. We'll make sure we have no errors. Uh, let it recompile. And there are none. Just the warnings from Train Toolkit. So I'm going to head back into Mono Develop. And actually, looking at my notes, that's all I really had written down for this tutorial was uh, just to clean up the AI states and uh, that targeting uh, when it was actually retreating back to its spawn point. So I'm going to go ahead and end this tutorial here. Uh, it's number 254, I believe, if I've got my numbering memorized. But anyway, uh, like always, if you uh, like the tutorials, make sure you give it a thumbs up so I know people are actually uh, still enjoying the tutorial series. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.